Welcome to episode four of this season of Let's Talk, a podcast for women where we seek to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life. Your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday life. Um, my name is Jackie Hill Perry, and I am here with Jasmine Holmes and Melissa Kruger. So far, uh, we've talked about our spiritual heroes, we've talked about holiness, we've talked about fear. And today we're going to talk about people pleasing. Melissa, would you just so happen to know anything about that? <laughs> I really don't want to have this conversation today. Actually. But you got to please us. It's by like it. Jasmine laid it all out there about anxiety. I did. And I'm like, oh, this one's going to be painful today. Um, so today we're going to talk about people pleasing. Mm-hmm. And so let me just start with a question. What actually is people pleasing? Because we can shine it up and make it look pretty good mm-hmm. and saying, hey, I'm just loving my neighbor. You know, I'm just right. I'm just putting their needs before my needs. So what's really, what is people pleasing? And what's saying, oh, no, we'll do lunch where you want to do lunch. Mm-hmm. You know, what's, what's the difference? It's hard. It, it, we can Christianize it. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so hard for me to know how to root it out in my heart. Mm-hmm. It's when your identity is founded on other people's perception of you. Ooh. Take okay, a knife therapist, and turn Jasmine. it. <laughs> Why don't you? Thanks. <laughs> Ouch. You asked a question. <laughs> and you answered it so well. I was giving you an answer. Mm. But yeah, I mean, that's a difference, right? Because it's like, yes, am I just serving somebody because I want to? Because mm. I feel there's a verse in Proverbs. I need to find it. I always mention, like, mention it. And it's, um, do not refuse good from whom it is due when mm. it is in your power to give it. Mm. And I think about that all the time. Because I'm like, if it's in my power to give it, mm. I want to do good to other people. If, if it's in my power to say yes, I'm going to say yes. Um, but people pleasing kind of takes that and says, even if it's not really in my power to say yes, I'm going to try to say yes. And if I have to say no, then I'm going to feel bad about myself. Mm. I'm going to worry that you don't like me. And if you don't like me, that's going to ruin my whole day. I just, people pleasing is more about wanting to be liked than wanting to be useful than wanting to serve, I think. Interesting. That's good. So you would say that, People pleasing is always somehow rooted in, you know, people's perceptions of us. Mm -hmm. Because it's man, it's man pleasing instead of pleasing God, Hmm. as opposed to caring about your brother because because you care about the holy God who made that person in their image. Mm -hmm. You stop at the person and you're like, I care about what they think about me because I just do. Yeah, that's good. Can either of you think of a time when people-pleasing tendencies um, came out and caused you to act in an unhelpful way? Like, can you see it in your own life where you chose to please man rather than even God, and you see it come out, and you saw the ramifications of that in your life? If you can think of any instances. I struggled a lot with it when I was younger. Like, when I was in school, my mom would always... Tell me, she would just be like, Jasmine, your need to please other people is going to be the death of you. Because if, if all my friends jumped off a bridge, I was going to be like, I mean, they all do it. If they don't do it, then they're going to then, then, then get to the bottom and realize I didn't do it, and they're, they're going to feel bad. So I got to do it. Like, it's just, and a lot of it, I think, came from, I grew up in a predominantly white Hmm. cultural setting and I was always the only the only black girl I was also a pastor's kid so I lived in the fishbowl of just people's expectations and so people's expectations plus some ethnicity race baggage plus like and so all that stuff just kind of came together into the perfect storm of wanting to be the person that everybody else Hmm. wanted or needed me to be um I feel a certain area of dominion over that in my life. In recent years, um, could be dominion, could also just be that I have learned to deal with it in different ways. So (laughs) instead of trying to please everybody, I'm like, well, I can't please everybody, so forget you. We just won't be friends. That's not good either. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's a spectrum. I think I see it the most in my yeses, uh, especially the ministry stuff. Um, I just realized I was saying yes too much. And it was just like, why are you saying yes? You don't, you don't even want to do it. You know, 
You don't have no desire to. Mm-hmm. You you probably even barely like them. But you're just saying yes. And it was because I was afraid of like the no. Like I was afraid of um, not even necessarily letting them down. Because there's a huge part of me that does not care uh, what people think. But there's also a part of me that wants people to think that I am a flexible servant. Mm. <laughs> if that makes sense, mm-hmm. you know. And so that has got me in a lot of trouble with a lot mm. of anxiety and just unnecessary busyness mm. because those yeses add up. That's a good distinction. So I often kind of want people to like me, mm-hmm. but it could be that we're people pleasing when we want people to have a certain perception mm-hmm. of us too. Mm-hmm. It might not be that we care if we're liked, yeah, but we might care how you view me. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good that's a helpful Which way to me, add on to it. Yeah. It makes me think that social media is like a uh, people pleasing medium then. Oh, Cause it's all yeah. about, it's all about Ooh. perception. It's all about like ple- people liking your pictures or liking your feed or yeah. curating something that's going to please other people. Absolutely. I never thought of it like that. And d- yeah. even with Twitter, we're pleasing, you know, with our communication, mm-hmm. our words, how we crafted a sentence, made something super poignant and right. clever. Right. You know, Instagram, like you said, like a curated mm-hmm. life. I don't know about Facebook. I'm only on Facebook because my mom is. Uh, but y'all can tell me about That's that. That's where right. my relatives are too. So yeah. I don't know about Facebook. But <laughs> Facebook is like my cute kid pictures and cute kid yeah, stories. I don't really know what, yeah. what's the thing on there. <laughs> but. Yeah, I can think of one time when I realized my people pleasing really reared up in a way that was harmful. Mm. And, and in this way, the world might have thought I was acting really nice, mm-hmm. but I don't think I was being actually kind. And mm-hmm. I think there's a there's a difference. I was um, at a hotel somewhere eating by myself and I was doing work. It was one of those times you have this breakfast and I was alone. Mm-hmm. I was like, great, I'll get some work done. And the chef actually came up to my table. I guess he was walking through and he is saw me sitting alone. There weren't many people in the in the restaurant anymore. And he started asking me what I was working on. And so I'm telling him, you know, and of course it was a book or something mm-hmm. to do with Christianity. Mm-hmm. And he starts, you know, w- when you do that, you now have opened up a door right. for a conversation. I was really happy to be alone. <laughs> but now this conversation is happening. And he is asserting all these truth claims. Well, you know, I think all religions are really the same. And, you know, I think it just doesn't matter which way you get there. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to make this conversation uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm. So I kind of was like, "Mm mm-hmm. You know, I just didn't, I wasn't bold. Yeah. Let me say that. I didn't agree or assent to what he was saying, but I wasn't as bold to say, you know, I don't agree with you. Mm. And I was nice but I, kindness yeah. would have actually been to disagree with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't want to not please him. Right. And right. so I kind of missed this opportunity that came to my doorstep mm-hmm. of someone who wanted to have a spiritual conversation, and I, I, I just niced him. Mm-hmm. That, that's a, I think, an amazing point because I think in a lot of people's of, um, I guess desire to be evangelistic, uh, they maintain kind of like this semblance of just like niceness instead of pressing a button or Mm -hmm. pushing a button because they don't want to go there, Mm -hmm. you know, and the Bible forces you to go there, you you know? Um, and so it's interesting how I guess like being a people pleaser can sometimes make you less courageous, Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, and really, truthfully, I wasn't loving him. I yeah. was loving me. Yeah, and, and I had to stare that in the face after the conversation, yeah. and I was like, and thankfully, yeah, I confess, and the Lord forgives me, yeah. and you know, all that. But I just realized that that we can have this real notion of niceness or what it looks like to love that's very worldly. Mm-hmm. Like the world would have said, "Oh no, you loved him by being accepting of his belief." Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, no, I didn't love him. Right, yeah. I didn't love him. Gospel love him. You know, I just, I, I did what was easier for me. Mm-hmm. Self-preservation. Yeah. 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 Which that's, is, that's a great point. Maybe a lot of people pleasing is self-preservation. Yeah. Trying to just put yourself in the best possible scenario to not have to deal with conflict or fallout or displeasure of others. So it seems like it's about others, but it's really about your comfort. Yeah. 
So how can that people pleasing lead us to sin that maybe looks a little different than what we think it might just be? Mm. How have you all seen it lead you down paths and you're like, oh, you know, it could be because we're pleasing others, we get ourselves into sinful stress and busyness Mm -hmm. and we're yelling at our kids. I mean, there are a lot of different ways it can take form, Mm -hmm. but how can seeking to please others rather than being a servant of God, because those are set up as contradictory things in scripture, how can it lead us? down paths. Yeah. I mean, I had a, um, a mentor when I was a late teens, early twenties, and I really wanted her to like me. And every time she would, um, give me advice about things in my life or every time she would, um, critique something about me, I try to change it. I try to like, you know, even if I, whether I agreed or disagreed, I would just try to change it. And we went on like that for, Two, three years, and when I got to a place of spiritual health and more maturity, I just stopped. I stopped. Mm. And our relationship imploded Mm. because, and on the one hand, I understand her perspective because she was like, Jasmine was this one way for all this time, and now all of a sudden, she's like, putting up these boundaries that weren't there before mm. and that changes the dynamic mm-hmm. of a relationship. And so that's that's been um a recurring theme in my life of be- becoming growing in maturity, growing in understanding and then alienating people who were used to me being a different way, more conciliatory. Mm. Um that's happened a lot to me. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's almost like you're a different person. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I understand that. I understand mm-hmm. why, why it looks that way to people where they're like, yeah. what happened to you? Like you used to, I'd have people be like, you used to be so nice. <laughs> <laughs> like what's, what's wrong with you now? You used to be so like, so easygoing, so sweet. Mm. And it's like, I'm not, not sweet. I'm just saying no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. I'm really trying to process this. Um, <laughs> I think one way, because I'm trying to diagnose myself, I think one way that uh, people pleasing can manifest in my life that leads to sinfulness and destruction is honestly the perception of intelligence. Mm. Um, Because I do like knowledge. I do like to learn. I do like information. On top of that, I'm a creative. And so I like to uh, communicate certain things in a particular way, hopefully, uh, or uh, preferably like artistically, Mm -hmm. clever. (laughs) And so I think that's all about people pleasing, though, Mm -hmm. because it's like I'm trying to like not even gain this knowledge for you, but the knowledge that I've gained and how I say it, Mm -hmm. I want it to be liked by you Mm -hmm. and affirmed by you and enjoyed by you. I enjoy somebody saying, I really like the way you put that, you know? And so that's, that becomes destructive one because I've seen in my own heart, how I can be judgmental of people who may not communicate well, you know, Mm -hmm. I've sat inside Mm -hmm. of conferences and it's like, why did they, Say it that uh, way. I've definitely done that. Too. Or, you know, those people's preaching style mm-hmm. or, you know, or having conversation with conversations with people and tuning out just because they don't, they don't, like, they're just not engaging. It's mm-hmm. just like the conversation seems so shallow and basic that I'm like, I don't really want to be here. Mm-hmm. So, like, it just, it turns you into, I think, a super loveless, judgmental egotistical Mm -hmm. person and these behaviors may not even be obvious to other people you know but it's a heart thing that god still sees it's an idol that god can still identify and say no you setting up like you know a little asher off in your (laughs) your heart (laughs) ma'am and you need to tear that thing down so Mm -hmm. i think i think that's a fair assessment of myself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah (laughs) yeah it is I just realized when I said, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> that was really thinking like, you, you know, because I don't want to be out here saying, I don't please people. It's like, no, I do. It it's looks just, different It's sometimes. just different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's a good question. What am I hoping to point people to? Mm-hmm. Is it my words, my life? I mean, I'm thinking about social media and yep. all of that. Or is it? to make them want to be in the Word, to want to know God more. Because it's, it, you know, there, there's, there should be a right expression yeah. um, 
because God made you creative. Mm -hmm. And so to use your creativity to display the glory of God in beautiful ways. I, I, there's a, I'm sure there are moments where you're like, yeah, I mean, this feels good to yeah. do it in the right way. Yeah. And I think we know the difference. Yeah. Um, but how have you all learned to spot the difference in your life? Like when, can, have you, or maybe if you have people who can point out the difference of when are you saying yes to things because it's a it's honoring to God and sometimes that means it's hard and you do find right. yourselves busy right. and you find yourself stretched too thin and that doesn't mean it was simple to say yes. Mm -hmm. But then how do you know the yes was a I was just doing that to make somebody else happy. Yeah, have you figured out ways to discern that? I think it's really hard. I mean, it is. It, it is. I mean, I I'm in a season of my life where I've I've said yes to a lot of things. A lot of things. But I've realized that they were all things that I specifically asked God for. That's good. Opportunities that I specifically asked God to present. Mm. And so even though I've said yes to a lot of things, I'm like, I don't think I can take any of these things off my plate because I think that God wants me to do all of them. Yeah. And that's a work of the spirit. Yeah. Because we just talked about in the last episode how you girl, <laughs> she gets anxious. <laughs> okay. So that's the Lord. Um but then I've had other times in my life where I was saying no because no is easier hmm. for me because I was scared or mm -hmm. because I just wanted to protect my own time and I wanted to protect. So I, mean, I don't think there's like a blanket answer to that question. I really do think that it's a very spirit-led, mm -hmm. prayerful consideration and having people in your life who know you, know the parameters of your life, know the parameters of your season and can help you. So I think sometimes we feel like we have to make all these decisions on our own, um, even if we're married or even if we have church community or mm -hmm. even if we have a great pastor, we're like, I just have to yes, no right now by myself mm -hmm. instead of saying, you know what? Let me think about that. Let me pray about it. Let me talk to some wise people about it. And let me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. I think she said it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Prayer is prayer and community. Um, and just, I think with prayer, just... Uh, like trusting the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to guide you towards truth, mm -hmm. you know, um, because for me, I've just had to ask the question of why, but not deceiving myself with the answer. Right. It's like, no, like spirit, I really want you to show me why through whatever means. And so through the scriptures, through Holy Spirit filled people, you know, and he will, because I think God is just a good father like yeah, that. Absolutely. Like he's just not going to leave you in the dark for too long, especially when you've asked him to turn the light on. Mm -hmm. I really like that saying that I just said I know, that was for good. myself. <laughs> Bars. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a, a small question. Mm. Would you say, just even in light of what I just uh, what I was saying about myself, that some of our people pleasing is or can be connected to the gifts hmm. that God has given us? Mm -hmm. Because I have friends who like are Enneagram twos or whatever, super helpful people, real kind and nice, um, usually like with a gift of hospitality, mm -hmm. who struggle with people pleasing the most. Mm -hmm. Right. But it but it's it's linked to mm -hmm. some of the gifts that God has given them. Right. Right? Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. I Melissa, mean that's my she, problem. Like, killing you softly with her yeah, song. Right exactly. Now. Okay. Exactly. Are that's you a my two? Problem. I'm a two. Um, <laughs> that makes <laughs> So I wasn't even trying to describe you, girl. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> yeah. She just yeah. started squirming yeah. the whole time you were talking. She I was didn't, like, oh, I didn't know. I was that. describing my friends. <laughs> yeah, and it, it does. I think it goes hand in hand. I, and that's what can make it so hard to discern for right. me. Because I, unfortunately, I'm plagued by verses, verses that say, anyone who knows the good they ought to do and fails to do it sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to go get tea or for Jasmine or coffee for Jackie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I can almost be plagued by, I see so many good things to do. Mm -hmm. And and I have, I've had to learn just because there's a good thing to do doesn't mean I'm the one who's supposed to do it. That's good. You know, and my husband is not a people pleaser at all. And so it's been so helpful to have his lens mm -hmm. looking in my life. Now, sometimes I want to be like, stop, mm -hmm. you know, stop telling me what I should say yes or no to. But he's really helpful. One thing I've learned to do is slow down with my yes. Before I'd say yes really quickly. Mm -hmm. And now I'll say, hey, I need to check. Mm -hmm. There's like one thing for me I've done with speaking is I'll no longer, 
I won't even take anything till I've looked at my kids' school schedule for the year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes you find yourself, you said yes, meaning well. Like for me one time, it was then it was my daughter's homecoming. And I had said yes like a year and a half before. Oh, and then you're like, oh. That was tough. You know, so every yes might be a no to something else. And it's really hard to say yes faithfully and and go forward in it and trust the Lord in it. But I've learned to slow my yeses to certain things um, in hopes of of trying to make sure I'm listening to the Spirit Hmm. and pausing Mm -hmm. rather than just jumping in and always doing things just because I should. So one thing that I kind of actually love is when my children want to please me. <laughs> you know, it's one of those times people pleasing works really well as a mom. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, good. I like that you want to do what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. But it's obviously it's not something we want our children. Yes, we want them to to please us, but ultimately we want them to please God. Mm-hmm. Right. So how do we teach the difference to our kids? You know, how do we walk that fine line? Because it would just be so nice... If, if I raise my kids to be just like me and they love that, and then it's easy. But the reality is I'm a sinner. And so I actually want them to always be living their life pleasing God, which might mean they move across the ocean to be a missionary in a foreign country and live far away from me. Mm-hmm. You know, how do, we, how do we raise them with that freedom to please God and follow in His ways and not just people please or people please even to us. Well, seeing as though you have children that aren't in diapers, right? <laughs> how would you answer that question? Yeah. Cause I feel like we're still in a stage where something that I've had learned with my sons is that their first example of God's love, mm. God's holiness, God's requirements of them is me. Yeah. So they're in a stage where I am the one that is showing God's love to them mm. right now. Yeah. That's so right. yeah, how do we, once we get out of that stage? That's that's a good point because you're right. In some sense, obeying you is is a commandment. Mm-hmm. Like to obey your parents as to the Lord is what they're supposed to do right right now. But then it changes mm-hmm. to honor your father and mother. Like you know, obey right. obey in these young years, but then it's honor them. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we've seen this with our kids. In some ways, they make different choices, even in what type of church they're going to and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, for me, I'm just so glad they're going to church. I'm like, it's okay if you want to go to a Baptist church. I mean, it's (laughs) shocking, but (laughs) we're okay with it. No, I mean, you know, there there are choices they're starting to make. Um, And it's been interesting. I, I mean, I feel like I'm in a very limited world. I haven't had kids who are yelling at me and rebelling in these obvious ways. That'd be mm-hmm. a lot harder mm-hmm. and a lot mm-hmm. more painful. Um, so our kids are making choices, but we just have conversations about it. Right. I mean, and, and some of them, I want them to make their own mm-hmm. choices. I, I, I mean, we've told our daughter, hey, go to a different style church. You're going to find things there you love that they do so much better. I mean, Mm -hmm. one thing, to be quite honest, she's seen at the church she's involved in is they're much more missional and Mm outreach-focused, and they're talking about going around on campus and sharing the gospel, and she didn't have that Mm -hmm. as much in the tradition that we raised her in. And so I've been like, take the good. And I said, are you seeing any weaknesses? And she's seen some weaknesses, Mm -hmm. too. And so some of it, I think, is being open to realize our children's choices are not a reflection of us. Oh, mm. say that again. You know, as a yes. parent. <laughs> yes. Like, we sometimes... You should tattoo it on your stomach. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> that what they do is what they do. Mm-hmm. And as they age, I think there's a hard... That's a hard transition to make as a parent. Because for so long, you know, we kind of look at that three-year-old who's throwing that fit, and then the mom gives them the treat, and we're like, well, right. that is your like, fault. Oh, look what you did. Because you just rewarded the tantrum. Yep. You know... To where they really get to the point where their choices are their choices. Mm -hmm. And letting them do that freely allows them not to have to people please. Mm -hmm. I think we can raise kids who are people pleasers by always Mm -hmm. being dissatisfied by the choices they're making. But kids going to know when it's like, you're you're embarrassing me. Oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. we do. You know, for for different things versus, hey, that's not the choice I'd make, but I love you. Mm -hmm. Go go do it. I um, come from the homeschool community (laughs) and at its worst it is all about creating children in your own image Hmm. at its best 
It is about facilitating the growth of children who have the freedom to follow Christ in a variety of different ways. Homeschooling is a great, great outlet for that. But at its worst, definitely creating kids in your own image. Mm. So this woman um, sent me a message and said, how do your parents deal with the fact that you are a Presbyterian who's not going to homeschool your kids? And I was like, deal with why do they have to deal with it? What do they have to deal with? And she was just like, well, because they raised you to homeschool your kids and to be Baptist. And I was like, they raised me to obey God. <laughs> they didn't raise me to homeschool Lady. my kids. or me. And, But it, you could just tell that she was very much seeing her children's decisions as a perfect reflection of her because through homeschooling, she thought that she was taking out every influence besides herself Hmm. in her children's life so that she could then raise that child up in the perfect image of herself, which to me sounds terrifying. I don't need to be the only image in my child's life. I can't raise them up perfectly. That's not what I'm called to do. Praise God. Hmm. But I do think that, and again, at its worst, I'm a homeschool advocate Mm -hmm. through and through. I had a great experience, but at its worst, it's a place where I I have also seen that, tendency and proclivity to think of our children as the sum of the choices that we've made on their mm. behalf instead of thinking them thinking of them as image bearers mm. who then grow up to be adults and it can also happen on the flip side with children who blame their parents for every single thing mm. that goes wrong in their life and every single thing that that their parents did that wasn't perfect or that they didn't see as perfect and I mean, healthy adulthood is seeing your parents as flawed people who did the very best they could by God's grace, being able to call out the sins of your parents because they're not perfect, but also not always seeing yourself in relation to your parents. Hmm. So my son is four. I'm not doing that yet, but I'm already thinking when I get an email from school, okay, all right, this is not about you. This is about when. This is about when growing and learning, and you're here to help him, and you're here to shepherd him and guide him. But every single thing Wynn does is not a reflection of you because you're not the only factor in Wynn's life. He's his own entire person. Yeah. I think for me, uh, I, I haven't gotten here yet because, again, you know, they're kids' kids. <laughs> but... um. Knowing that, like, my children are arrows, knowing that, like, the Great Commission applies to them to, you know, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations and teaching uh, them all that God has commanded. It's the all part (laughs) that makes me want to equip my children not to be people pleasers because I think the way society is and culture is and will continue to be, it's going to be hard to teach all that God has commanded mm-hmm. if you are addicted to pleasing people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have this uh, tattoo on my arm from 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 23, and it says, like, you've been brought with a price, so do not become bond servants of men. And so I think I just want to raise them with this mentality that if you are in Christ, God sees you and is pleased by you. Mm-hmm. And so having this like divine transcendent stamp of approval sets you free to go therefore into all nations Mm -hmm. and be disapproved by people if need be. Now, the goal isn't to be a jerk. The goal isn't to be rude. The goal isn't to be bigoted. But if in the love of God, you are still preaching the truth, loving the truth, being an advocate for the truth about justice, about identity, about gender, about sexuality, about marriage, I don't even know what... What else we'll be talking about in 20 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. about aliens being made in the image of God? I have no idea. Right. Uh, but whatever it is, if you're doing that with a heart to love God and love people and people hate you, it does not matter because their hatred of you is not authoritative. Mm-hmm. God's word is. God's person is. And so I don't know how I'm going to do it. I think I'm modeling it the best I can first. And then eventually we're going to get to a point where it's like, yo, woe to you when all men speak well of you, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) like the Mm -hmm. fathers did that or like they did that to the false prophets. And so the goal isn't to make everybody applaud you. Mm -hmm. The goal is to just make God happy. And by doing that, people are going to be mad, but a lot of people are going to get saved. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we bless God. That was good. I Thank mean, that you. That was girl. like a little mini that was sermon. Really good. I was, felt it in my soul. That was good. <laughs> that, no, because I go into these college campuses mm. 
and teach and talk and I see all these students, I don't think we're ever trained mm. to know how to deal with people not liking them. Yeah, that's a great point. And so we wonder why everybody is confused, why nobody's getting an authentic gospel mm -hmm. because they're afraid of losing friends. They're afraid of losing followers. They're afraid of losing jobs. And it's just like, come on now. They ain't not, in the grand scheme of things, these, po these things can't possibly matter more to you than the approval of mm -hmm. God. But obviously they do. Mm -hmm. And so where did that start? Like, what weren't you taught? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, did your parents just leave out the prophets? Because it's hard to read the prophets and not walk away with, oh, man. Right. <laughs> being like a, you know, a servant of God and being honest and being prophetic. Don't make people like the world. you. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, come on, look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but I also like the point that you made of it's not just being a jerk for being a jerk's sake. Because mm -hmm. that's more... A jerk for Jesus in that thing? There's plenty of that on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Because some people get off on not being liked. Yeah, uh -huh. that's more like, I'm more like my background. Mm -hmm. is, yeah, people ooh, I, Look are, at me, I'm being persecuted. Yes, people <laughs> who are like, ooh, yeah, they just can't stand the truth. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> it's like... No, seriously. It's like you're feeling good about yourself. Which like you're is still a yourself. backwards way of people right. pleasing. Like you're puffing yourself up by the fact that people don't like you. Mm -hmm. That's mm. very bizarre. Yeah. Um, so the opposite of people pleasing is not being a jerk. You know, it's not like I don't want to be a people pleaser. That's, right. so, that's a great point. No, I hate you. That's ha. right. Okay, that's also not God pleasing. Yeah. Like you want to please God. Mm -hmm. That's that's the goal here. That's no, we want to love people yes mm -hmm. you know love them well like love them by like you said telling them the truth mm -hmm. and doing it for the glory of god not to be liked or to be disliked but for god's glory caring more about their soul than about their reaction to you in response to you Ooh. on either side of that spectrum mm -hmm. um because i do know people who judge their interaction with non-believers based on how mad they make the non-believer and it's like okay but was god mm -hmm. glorified or yeah yeah, she just couldn't stand me because I was just coming after all her idols. Ha, ha, ha. And it's like, mm. all right, cool. Does she know God loves her? Or? Right. <laughs> or no. <nah. laughs> very, very interesting. Did she get mad at you because you were just coming straight from the scripture and straight from the heart of God or because you were trying to offend her? Mm -hmm. I just, hmm. there's it, It's always kind of interesting because the sinners always seem to resonate with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it was always the Pharisees who seemed to get really mad at it. Oh, they yeah. Got yeah, I mean, it was an interesting thing because he, he spoke with kindness mm -hmm. to the sin sinner, the person who knew they needed him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it does always the seem like The person who thought they were righteous, he was like, both barrels, yeah. you whitewashed tomb, you yeah. open sepulcher. Yeah, like, he did not oh. hold back. Mm. He, he, he was willing to yeah. go... He was willing to go after mm -hmm. some things. Which I always, when I read the Gospels, realize that I am the Pharisee. Like, mm. I am the one who was raised the right way and has all the law and has all the goody tooth. So, so whenever I'm reading and I'm seeing Jesus talk to the Pharisees really roughly, I think I'm usually used to being like, wow, those Pharisees. They just, again, like the Israelites, they just didn't have it right. Mm. And now I read it and I'm like, oh, that's me. He's yeah. talking to me. I am the whitewashed too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in, in some ways, they're the epitome, epitome of man pleasers because mm -hmm. they created Absolutely. their own law yeah. and then they felt so good when they followed it. Yeah. You know, and I do think there's a side of people pleasing that is actually surprisingly legalistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm going to create a standard That's that good. this means I love you. And then you're right on the other side of it means I get hurt when you don't love yeah. the way I've made up a standard mm -hmm. to love. Whereas when we love the way God's called us to love, it's going to be painful. Yeah. I mean, it's going to strip us of self and it's going to hurt at times to love someone else. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so we're definitely not saying run from ever loving hard yeah. because it's hard right. to, to love someone as Christ loved the church. Yeah. I mean, it says he gave himself up for her. Mm -hmm. You know, he made himself a sacrifice for her. Mm -hmm. So we should, in a right sense, sacrifice for the sake of the gospel right. mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think it, but it's not for us. Yeah. And so one way I think I can recognize it in my heart is when I can do it freely hmm. without thinking, oh, now when are you, I scratched your back, mm -hmm. when are you going to scratch mine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and there's this, oh, that was the selfless love of Christ right. being poured out versus mm -hmm. this, oh, I did this for you, now you do this for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. They go, it's just looking beyond the person, whether 
whether you're having to say no and you're offending them or whether you're saying yes Mm -hmm. and they're happy looking beyond them and their reaction, not basing your decision on their reaction, but really to faith, basing your decision and your words on faithfulness to Christ, which is hard because people are in the, they're in the way. (laughs) I just only see that person that's in the way, but I need to look beyond that person. So, so how can the church actually sometimes foster man-pleasing over God-pleasing? In some ways, almost like this Christian, it's, it's so hard to tell sometimes what is the self-seeking versus what is the self-sacrificing. Yeah. But sometimes the church can feed a self-righteousness or a mm-hmm. legalism or a, if you do this, you're a good Christian. Yeah. Right. Or if you do this, you're a godly woman. Yeah, I or, was going to say, it does it with womanhood a lot. I think a lot of teaching about womanhood is fueled by shame and people-pleasing and, you know, trying to keep up with the other women around you instead of really being submitted to the Word of God. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, there are pastors preaching this from the pulpit, although there might be. Um, but more so just how we interact with each other and encourage one another. Um, It can be really shame and people-pleasing based a lot of the time, uh, particularly with women. And I say with women because I'm not a man. I don't really, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't don't know what what conversations they're having or what motivations are at play there, but I do know a lot of times when I talk to women, um, a lot of their need or want to please comes from it's motivated by shame Mm. not book chapter and verse yeah yeah i think church uh cultures that are super unhealthy or spiritually abusive um they can make it seem as if like obedience to the pastors or the leaders and you know doing certain types of uh ministry things like is the same as obedience to god And I think when that becomes confused, people pleasing just becomes addictive Mm -hmm. because you just you don't know the difference between obeying God and like honoring or listening to your pastors, you know. So they're like, uh, so you're going to serve in this thing. And I feel like God is, you know, calling you to do this or Mm -hmm. this will be useful to you. And, you know, if you say no. Like, you'll be a disappointment. You'll be reprimanded. You might get some church discipline. Heck, mm-hmm. <laughs> So it's like you start to say yes to all these things that God probably hasn't even called you to do mm-hmm. um, out of obedience and out of fear. And that's just not the environment I think a church should create. I think there should be a measure of freedom and giving people the opportunity and the autonomy to decide based on their relationship with God what ministry they should do and the freedom to say you know what I'm burnt out let me opt out of it Mm -hmm. because let somebody there's some churches I've heard where someone wants to opt out of ministry and now there's all these accusations like what are you doing on the back end why are you so burdened Mm -hmm. where it's like bro like they're tired and so and, and that's not to say you don't push you don't inquire you don't counsel you don't challenge but at the same time I think we yeah, we just don't make it easy on people to please God over and above people mm-hmm. when we just convolute things. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of times that comes from our own misunderstanding of the word. We can't encourage people to walk rightly if we haven't done the work of looking to the word ourselves. And yes. so sometimes I think people have really good intentions um, with with things that are just mm. wrong ways of teaching or wrong ways of relating. I don't think a lot of times people aren't malicious. Mm-hmm. They're just haven't been steeped enough in the word, which to me is a cautionary warning for me that I need to be steeped in the word so that I know the difference between these things. Hello. Um, So it's not a log and spec situation. Yeah, that's a great point though, because we can only know how to please the Lord if we're in the word. Mm -hmm. And so if we're just listening to a pastor, they, I mean, we're told in the word, there are actually some who are wolves in Mm -hmm. sheep's clothing and they're actually set out to destroy the flock. Mm -hmm. And they, it says specifically that they go after women Mm -hmm. sometimes. And I think, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we have to be a strong willed woman Mm -hmm. is going to be a woman who knows what God says and what God requires. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's a pastor out there telling you to do something that's clearly not true in scripture, don't follow. Yep. You know, and that's maybe that's a great way in some ways to just 
tie up this, that the, the best way we make sure we're pleasing God is to be obeying God. Mm-hmm. And how do we know how to obey God? We're listening to his word on a daily basis mm-hmm. so that we make sure we're walking in his commands mm-hmm. and we're praying and asking for what's unclear. There's so much that's clear. Yeah. So that's not up for grabs. You know, if you're thinking... You know, should I have an affair with that married man? It's a no. Yeah. You know, that's it's always that no. it would not please God to do yeah. that. Yeah. You know, we can, we, there's so much that's clear, but I think in a lot of it's the unclear mm-hmm. where we might fall into people pleasing some more. But that's going to take dependence upon the Spirit. That's going to take a daily relationship with God for Him to start showing us, hey, this is the way, walk in it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we have to listen to Him in that way. Well, you are the best at closing. Just, just wrapped it up again. Isn't there a TV show called The Closer? Mm. There is. Maybe there is. Now it's your show. Okay. I'll so be the talented. Closer. Yeah, I'll be the closer. Even though you got you to gotta access a favorite things I know. question. I know. So we're moving on to favorite things. Um and so this is an interesting one to me. Um, on favorite things, if you were going to be on a reality TV show, what show would you want to be on and why? Is it one where I'm like receiving gifts? Because you got like, you know, extreme home makeover. That's oh, what I'm going to be on. Stuff like that's that. where we all are. Okay. Yeah, I want to be on that one I, or anything on HGTV. I just want to, I like my house the way that it looks on the outside. Sometimes they change the outside. I, I, but I want... Yeah, whatever. You have to pick a specific HGTV. Uh, I don't know the names. I just turn them on when I'm in hotels and just watch. <laughs> what? I know Fixer Upper. Uh-huh. I know oh. the name of that one. Yeah. I'm not a big shiplap person. Oh. So you don't have to that be. That might be a problem. No. Well, they're technically not on HGTV anymore. That's true. But, oh, man. So. I think but they're, they're, they oh, have no, their no, own channel. It's a, sh- it's a show, though. Yeah, you can be on their show. All right, I'll be on their show. Okay. There you go. I would be on uh, Top Chef. That would be a, oh, a be judge. Fun. That would be fun. Oh, you get to try fun. what they create. Exactly. Oh. Now, as soon as they introduce, you know, oysters, that's not my thing. Cantaloupe, not my thing. Yeah. Tartar, mm-mm. <laughs> I'm going to eat it yeah. because, I, you know, I got people-pleasing right. tendencies. Oh. Well, and you're a judge. <laughs> but, you got it. <laughs> I don't want to let nobody down. That's but. a good idea. I didn't think about really food idea. options. Uh, all I watch is Food Network. So when okay. I thought reality show, that's what yeah. I thought. Well, I was thinking HGTV, and I'd probably do Love It or List It. Because really? Because then you get to see the other options, but then oh. they'd fix up my house in some ways I'd like for them to come in and fix up my house. That's fair. And Anyways. then they're fighting to make it, you know, and so I'd get to see some really good houses, but then they'd make it all nice for me. I like that. That's a good so choice. I'd do that. That's it for this episode of Let's Talk. Come back next week for a discussion on judging people, judgmental saints. You can subscribe to Let's Talk through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. Check out other shows from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network at tgc.org forward slash podcast. The Gospel Coalition supports the church in making disciples of all nations by providing resources that are trusted and timely, winsome and wise, and centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. 